The information in this video should not be relied upon as a formal valuation for any of the featured computers, and no responsibility is taken for how the viewer may use or misuse this information. Whilst every effort has been made to confirm the accuracy and validity of source data used in the compilation of this report, there may be errors and or omissions. This video may also contain my honest personal opinion. Prices quoted in this video are based on sold listings on ebay.com.au for a specified period, are in Australian dollars, and may be indicative of the Australian retro computing market at the time of publishing. This is the AusRetroComp Australian Retro Computing Market Report for May 2020. This video includes a snapshot of the most popular retro computers on ebay.com.au during the month, as well as a longer term look at a number of machines that regularly appear on the Australian market. Before I begin, I'd like to thank you for the response to the April report. When looking at May's eBay results, it became clear to me that a couple of market segments may benefit from a few tweaks to my reporting methodology. More on that shortly. Starting with the Commodore 64 market, working 64Cs made up the lion's share of May's volume, with a total of 10 machines changing hands at an average of $231.85 apiece. Prices ranged from $142.50 to $350 each depending on condition. The two part 64Cs that changed hands this month did so with just $2 separating highest and lowest prices, giving an average of $111.50. Three working bread bins sold in May, giving an average of $303.46. Non-running bread bins traded at a similarly narrow price band to the 64C, being less than $4 between highest and lowest prices, the average price being $175.67 apiece. The Commodore 64 market has rebounded in both price and volume since hitting a low in April. A total of 17 units changed hands in May versus just 11 in April, representing an increase in volume of 55%. May's Amiga market was a bit different to what we've seen over the past few months. Amiga 500s were relatively thin on the ground in May, with only three working examples changing hands at an average of $439.17 each, along with a parts machine that sold for $192.50. Looking across the rest of the Amiga range, Amiga 600s fetched between $760 and $913 each, and a bare Amiga 1000 system unit with no keyboard, mouse or accessories sold for $625. At the top end of the Amiga market was this Amiga 2000 HD. Originally listed in mid-April at $2,250, it sold on the 4th of May for $1,500. Between the seller meeting the market in a timely manner and the buyer scoring one of the best examples of an Amiga 2000 I've seen for a while, this is, in my opinion, a solid deal all round. iMac G3s appear to fit into three categories. Working and complete, working and incomplete, and not working. The working and incomplete category, in the context of the machines selling without their original keyboard and mouse, is a trend that I didn't see coming when I first started researching the Australian retro computing market at the start of 2020. In order to avoid skewing reports on legitimately non-functioning Macs, incomplete machines are now reported separately. In May, complete G3 sold for between $172.50 and $299. Incomplete G3 sold for between $85 and $200, and one parts G3 sold for $100. The most expensive complete and incomplete G3s were limited edition graphite models. It's also clear that whilst the Mac Plus is a relatively big volume seller in the vintage 68k Mac market, it's worth considering other 68k Macs that also trade on a regular basis, such as the SE and the LC2. As such, the Mac Plus section of the report is now the Mac 68k section. Just like the G3, there are working 68k Macs that sell without all of their accessories. Therefore, 68k Mac sales are also reported as complete, incomplete, or parts. Working and complete 68k Macs averaged at $390 each during May, the lowest price unit being a Mac Plus selling for $150, and the highest price unit being an SE that sold for just under $700. Working and incomplete machines ranged from $56.78 for an LC2 up to $269.99 for an SE, and parts machines ranged from $102.50 for a Mac Plus up to $324.99 for an SE30. The SE30, so named due to its Motorola 68030 CPU, is highly prized among vintage Mac enthusiasts. As such, I'm not overly surprised that a non-running SE30 fetched similar money to a working and fully complete Macintosh Classic system. Looking at the longer term, the micro B market, on the surface at least, appeared to cool off in May. 
two units sold, with the most expensive example being a 16K Plus that sold for $315. As an early B, it lacks some of the niceties of later model Bs that fetch strong money during March and April. The other Micro B, said to be the keyboard component from a later computer in a box model, sold at $195 buy it now. Why so cheap? Well, a lack of keycaps and generally poor cosmetic condition may have something to do with it, but the fact it sold so quickly that I almost overlooked it in my May reporting leaves me with a feeling that the B market is still pretty spicy. Maybe some of April's market enthusiasm for the Micro B shifted over to the Apple II. In May, a new high price of $743 was set, the machine in question being a late model Apple IIe with green screen monitor and one floppy drive. An Apple II GS also changed hands this month for $890. Four TRS-80 Cocos found new homes, selling from $152.50 to $310 each, depending on condition. The lowest priced machine was a Coco 2, and the highest priced machine was a Coco 3. Three TI-99 4As have changed hands, with the most recent sale fetching the highest price of $202.46. This unit was a later beige model, boxed and in good condition. Dick Smith VZ200s and VZ300s ranged from $147.50 to $305 each depending on condition. Eight machines sold over this period, including a bundle of two machines sold in early March as mentioned in last month's report. Eight Atari STs sold over the past three months, ranging from $150 to $485 each. The lowest price machines were 520 STs, with the most expensive example being a boxed 520 STE upgraded with 4 megs of RAM, effectively turning it into a 4160 STE. Three BBC Micros have sold over the past couple of months, ranging from $200 to $400 each. The beep market is one where sale prices appear to be especially sensitive to overall condition. The most expensive machine being a BBC Master 128, sold with its original boxes, polys and user manual that was in overall good cosmetic condition. That was the Oz Retro Comp Australian Retro Computing Market Report for May 2020. I was going to mention a couple of interesting computers that sold during May, but the Amiga and Mac report tweaking took a bit longer than I expected. Maybe I should tack May's weird and wonderful retro computers onto the June report, or should I start making separate videos to cover the oddball machines that have sold over the last few months? Let me know what you think in the comments. Insert the usual like, share, subscribe calls to action here. Until next time, see you later.